All right, welcome everyone. Today's program is titled It's a Pioneer Life and it's from the Lincoln Boyhood National Memorial. And it is part of the Presidential Primary Sources Project. So the Presidential Primary Sources Project is a partnership between Internet2, the National Archives and the National Park Service. And it is a free interactive educational program we put on from January through April. And this is just a reminder that by participating in the webinar, you agree to be recorded, streamed, broadcasted, and archived as part of the program series. And we do have copies of all of our presentations on our YouTube channel, so you can find any of our past programs from throughout the years. And we're so excited to have you all here today. We've got a really great program lined up, and we want to have you participate as much as possible. So the main way we're going to participate today is using the chat box at the bottom of your screen. And with that, we just want to make sure that the comments are on topic to what the presenters are talking about. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat as well, but we also want to keep those on topic. And then if you would like to be promoted to a panelist, we can see you on video and you can kind of wave to us and we can see you guys. Um, and if you would like that, I can do that for you if you put that in the chat. And also we have we encouraged you to rename yourself as something you'd like to be called. That way, that way when we call you out, it's something that you'd like to be called. And if you need help with that, uh, you can drop that in the chat as well, and I can rename you. All right, here's our website if you'd like to register for future programs or find our video archive. And with that, I will pass it over to our wonderful presenters. Had to unmute myself. Hello, my name is Ranger Erin, and today at our uh, during our presentation, you'll also meet Ranger Paula. She'll be down at our Living Historical Farm in just a little bit. So welcome, you guys. We're so excited to meet with you today. We want to talk about um, the, the farms where Abraham Lincoln grew up, and we have some uh, living historical farms uh, so you can experience those places today. So there's a couple different sites we're going to talk about. I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see my PowerPoint. All right, so I'm going to look over here at my other screen so I can see what you're seeing. Um, this is a pioneer life. And we are at Lincoln Boyhood National Memorial. We're in Southern Indiana. We're gonna look at a map here. So we know that you guys are all over the country today. So we're, we're so excited to meet with you. Um, very exciting that we get to talk to kids all over the country that might not have an opportunity to come to the park. So welcome, we're so excited to see you. Um, why don't you take a look at the map? and find your state where you're living in today, where you are today. Go ahead and you can put it in the chat and I can see your responses. Go ahead and, and write in there where you are today. I see Wisconsin, Illinois. Fantastic. Yeah, one from Michigan. Oh, wonderful. We're so glad to meet with you all. I want you to look on the map and find Kentucky. Because our story of uh, Abraham Lincoln starts in Kentucky. So go ahead and find Kentucky there. I'll give you a hint. It's orange. Kentucky is where Abraham Lincoln was born. He was born in 1809 in Hodgenville, Kentucky. Right in Kentucky, there is a national park site at his birthplace. So you can actually visit that. The park is called Abraham Lincoln Birthplace uh, National Historical Park. And you can go there in Hodgenville. Now find Indiana. Now find Indiana for us. I'll give you a hint, it's yellow. Indiana is where I am sitting right now. I'm at Lincoln Boyhood National Memorial. And the reason that this place is a national memorial is because Abraham Lincoln lived here for 14 years. So he was born in Kentucky. When he was seven, he and his family moved here to Indiana. And we, we are in a town called Lincoln City now. But when Abraham Lincoln lived here, it was called Little Pigeon Creek. And we'll learn more about that in just a little bit. He lived here for 14 years. When he was 21, he and his family moved to Illinois. They moved to Springfield, Illinois. So can you find Illinois on the map? It's blue. Find Illinois. So you can see kind of the three states where Lincoln's life was really concentrated. We know later he did 
um, travel around the country uh, to campaign and things. And then we know, of course, that he moved to Washington, D.C. because he was president of the United States. But here are the three states. If you guys have your um, worksheet that goes along with this presentation, you can pull that out now and we can look at it. Um, but here are the three states um, that we were talking about earlier. So Abraham Lincoln was born in Kentucky. Let's see if we can get our, there we go. Our words are floating up. If you have the worksheet, you can fill in the blanks. You can fill in the blanks for the states. So he was born in Hodgenville, Kentucky. There's the name of the town. And then when he was seven, he moved to Indiana and lived in a place called Little Pigeon Creek. You can write that in the blanks in your, on your sheet, if you have that sheet. Then when he was 21, he and his family moved to Springfield, Illinois. All three of these places have national park sites that you can visit. There are 424 national park sites in our country. So there are 424 parks total. And so there are parks in every single state that you can visit. These places commemorate um, our history, our shared history. They commemorate um, different events, things that happen, or just really beautiful natural places. Those are your national parks, and they really do belong to you. So I want to encourage you to visit. So these three places commemorate Abraham Lincoln's life. Let's talk a little bit more about um, Abraham Lincoln Birthplace National Historical Park. This is in Hodgenville, Kentucky. It's about two hours from us here, um, two hour drive. But when he was seven, he and his family moved here. And when I say moved here, I mean, they packed their things in a covered wagon and they basically walked um, from Hodgenville, Kentucky to Little Pigeon Creek. Um, there is a site there that you can visit. And the reason that Thomas Lincoln chose that place to build their farm and to try to homestead was because of this, the sinking spring. So they called it the sinking spring farm. Um, we know how important water is, right? All living things need water. And he created this homestead right by the sinking spring so that the family could get water for themselves and for their livestock, that kind of thing. So there was water available and accessible to them here because of that spring. So Thomas Lincoln bought that land for $200. Hey, if you had $200 today, how would you spend it? What would you buy with $200? Go ahead and put your answers in the chat. I'm always interested. High yield savings account. We've got a grown up in the, in the audience here. Very smart. Concert tickets, amazing, yes. Wow, somebody's gonna have to tell me about that coin because I don't know it. Minecraft realms, yeah, got it. Very good, you guys, excellent. So yeah, he spent $200 and he bought himself a place to homestead. He he wanted to, um, to build the family farm. Uh, somebody said, give it to the poor. Wow, very nice. Okay, so Seeking Spring, um, it looks like you can visit this place and it looks like, if I can... Go to the next slide here. It looks like this now. So this is what it looks like in the park in uh, Abraham Lincoln Birthplace Historical Park. It looks like this. And of course there's a guardrail around it. They don't want anybody to kind of fall down into it. If you can imagine the plants on the um, outer part of that uh, well, the spring, I mean, are uh, a little slippery. So they put that fence up to keep you safe. So here is a statue of the Lincoln family. We have Thomas Lincoln, the father, um, Nancy Hanks Lincoln, his mother there. And then right here is Sarah. So he had a sister, Sarah. She's older than he is. Um, and then here is baby Abraham right here being held by Nancy Hanks Lincoln. So he was born on February 12th, um, 1809 in, uh, in Hodgenville, Kentucky um, at the Seeking Spring Farm. So if he was still alive today, he was born in 1809. If he was still alive today, how old would he be? You can put it in the chat. How old would he be now? Oh, somebody already has it, 214 years old. 
That's correct. Very good. So we know more about his family, his mom and dad, and his sister, Sarah. His, he and his sister were very, very close. Um, they were, you know, buddies. They got to run around and and play and work together and play together. He, uh, they, they did live in a little community, but they had each other. So because of land disputes, the family moved from um, Sinking Spring Farm to another place called Knob Creek. And it was about 10 miles away from Sinking Spring Farm. Um, there was some dispute over who actually owned the land. So the Lincolns ended up moving to Knob Creek um, when, when Abraham was two. Um, Knob Creek today is part of the birthplace historical park and they have a reproduction cabin and a kitchen garden to, so that people can understand what it might have looked like when Abraham Lincoln lived there with his family. So this is kind of what it looks like today. They did live there for about five years and then because of another land dispute, um, Thomas Lincoln started thinking about how he could make his purchase of land um, a little more concrete. He wanted it to be a little safer bet. So he uh, started looking around in Indiana because in Indiana, he could purchase the land directly from the government. And that was a safer bet. You know, you buy that land and you were pretty, you were guaranteed to have the title and to own that space because they kept cultivating the land they kept building these cabins and then he would have to give them up and so he wanted something so to purchase land from indiana um that's what he decided to do so that's why he and his family moved here to the place where i'm sitting um today so uh thomas lincoln bought 160 acres of land from the government here in indiana in what was little pigeon creek community Let's take a look at the map here. So the it's hard to see a little bit, but um, Little Pigeon Creek was in Perry County. And you can see Perry County, it's kind of in a light green, the center bottom. And that's where we're located right now. So it's now called Spencer County, um, but it was Perry County when they first moved here. And the community itself was called Little Pigeon Creek. So there was a little town here um, with some other people. So he, they had neighbors, they had a couple of little shops and stores and things like that here in the small town. Abraham Lincoln did write about his childhood in a couple of different ways. He released a, an autobiographical statement about his life. And he does talk about this area as a, the place where he grew up. So he wrote, there I grew up, talking about Southern Indiana. Because from the age of seven to 21, that's really where you do a lot of your growing, your, a lot of your maturing, a lot of becoming who you're going to be as an adult. Those are called formative years. So he spent his formative years here in Southern Indiana. Um, he also came back and visited as an adult and he ended up writing a poem about this place called My Childhood Home. So when you get time, look up that poem. He was actually a, a, a poet and a writer as well as being a lawyer and the president. So um, check that out for sure. He's got a lot of poetry. Um, but when they came here to this area, it was heavily forested. There were trees all over. So they ended up cutting down a lot of trees. Write in your chat, why do you think they had to cut down trees? What were they doing? Why were they cutting down the trees? Go ahead and write it in your chat so I can see. Excellent. Somebody, um, Holy Spirit said, Holy Spirit Homeschool said, clearing a space for their house. Yes, they needed space. They needed, you can't just put your house there and in, in with all the trees. They had to clear the land. They used the wood. To, as lumber to build with. So yes, to build their cabins. Um, they also needed um, to cook and things, right? So they would use the fire, the wood to make fire um, and to cook and to use the water for themselves. Um, and they also, Thomas, Thomas Lincoln was a carpenter. So he would use the wood to build different things as well, like cabinets, desks, 
those types of things. Very good. So when Abraham was seven, his father handed him an ax and said, hey, help me cut down these trees. So, but, you know, he was quite small when he was helping to um, prepare the land and for prepare the land for them to be able to survive on. Here's a, a, a schematic or a map of um, Little Pigeon Creek when the Lincolns lived here. You can see the red box around the Lincoln home there. Um, so that's where they lived. Um, and then around them, you can see that there are other neighbors and um, some shops. So you can see Jones store. You can see the blacksmith shop. You can also see um, Little Pigeon Meeting House and Cemetery um, there on that map. And here is um, the cabin site memorial. We are going to go to Ranger Paula. Ranger Paula is out at our cabin site memorial right now. So she's going to report out for us. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that we can see Ranger Paula. All right. So here we are at the cabin site memorial. And this is the site of where one of the Lincoln cabins stood. They built three here in Indiana. And so this is the third one. We call it the 1829 cabin. And they left Indiana in 1830. And we're not sure if they even got into this cabin. But a little over 100 years ago, people who lived in the community, the older people in the community that were around and alive during the time when this cabin would have been still standing here, all pointed to the same spot as to where that cabin stood. And so when they dug down a little bit, they saw a footprint of where a cabin stood. They also found the stones from the fireplace. So this footprint, if you've ever walked along a sandy beach and left footprints in the sand, if you've done that before, you, you kind of see behind you after you walked through. So it leaves like an imprint of where your foot was. That's kind of what this was. It was leaving behind like a little footprint of where that cabin once stood. So they were able to dig down, find out its location and its size, and then they put a memorial around it made out of bronze. So this is a bronze casting uh, marking that location and the size of that original cabin that the Lincolns lived in when they were here in Indiana. And I loved all of your answers earlier as to what they would do when the, when the trees were being cut down. So yes, they, they built up their cabins and believe it or not, it didn't take a whole lot of time to build a cabin. So that first cabin that the Lincolns were in would have been pretty quickly put up. And they say that that first cabin that the Lincolns really uh, lived in uh, was uh, up before Abraham Lincoln turned, uh, turned eight. So just before his eighth birthday, they were in that very first, uh, first big cabin that they, uh, that they lived in here for a while before they were starting to build this one. And my next stop, whenever I uh, come back to you again, will be inside of the cabin here at our Living Historical Farm. So off in the distance, you can see another cabin. And uh, this, this one is a, a replica of, uh, of the type of cabins that were around during that time. So when I see you again, we're gonna be inside of that. Back to you, Erin. Thank you, Ranger Paula. I'm gonna share my screen again. We'll go back to the slideshow. There we go. Okay. So the casting itself um, is a really cool part of our park. You can come out and see that um, just to mark the place. You know, we talk a lot about how when you're out walking on our grounds, you are walking in the footsteps of Abraham Lincoln. He, he walked on that same ground. They lived in this same area. They think that um, that they were in. And the reason that they think that um, is because of the things that he wrote down and other people wrote down as well. So we have some evidence that says, you know, this is where that, that cabin was. This is where they lived. So Paula is headed over to the Living Historical Farm now. This Living Historical Farm is a reproduction farm. We wanted people, our visitors, to be able to get an experience that tells them about how the pioneers would have lived back then. And based on the evidence that, that we have from primary sources, we reconstructed this farm. We have a cabin 
um, where the family would have lived. Um, there's also a carpentry shop because we know uh, Thomas Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's father, was a carpenter. We know they kept chickens, so there's a chicken coop. We know they kept sheep. There's a sheep barn and a smokehouse and also a kitchen garden. So we modeled it after um, the things that other people have written, and it's like a typical um, farm for uh, the 1820s. Um, so you can come here, you can see kind of a layout of how they would have lived. In the spring and summer, you'll be able to see people like just like Ranger Paula there where they're wearing the period clothing, where they have um, the pioneer uh, dress on and they're out working just to demonstrate pioneer life, what, they, what that would have been like. Let's see, she looks like she's ready back in the cabin. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we're gonna go to Ranger Paula. Hey, I'm over here at the fireplace, trying to get our fire going again, but uh, it's just wanting to smoke right now. But we are inside of our cabin here at the uh, Living Historical Farm. And so when you look around in our cabin here, you saw our fireplace and the beautiful corner cabinet and the tables and uh, benches that we have here. These are based on designs of Thomas Lincoln. And I believe Aaron just a few moments ago spoke that Thomas Lincoln is a carpenter and that he built furniture. So they had a carpenter shop with tools and he would build furniture for the people who lived in the area. And so he could build really fancy things as well. So the ones that you see inside of the cabin are based on designs of actual cabinets um, and table and benches that Thomas Lincoln made when he lived here in Indiana, so kind of cool. There's also, as we span around our cabin, you'll see a bed and then a trundle bed just underneath. And if you can imagine looking around in this cabin and it's just the size of it itself, and imagine eight people were living in here. Because we had once, uh, once Abraham Lincoln's mother, she died, and Aaron's going to talk about this later, but she died of milk sickness. And then his father remarried a lady who had three children of her own, and a cousin was living with them too. So eight people were living in this cabin. So you look at the, the bed over here, and that bed was for the mom and dad. And then you have the trundle bed underneath and that was for the children, but just the girls. So where did the boys sleep? That's a common question we ask people. You might not have noticed it, but I'm gonna pan over here next to the fireplace. And if you look over here next to the fireplace, you see pegs on the wall. And those pegs will lead right up to a hole in the ceiling. And up in that hole, the boys would go and they would sleep upstairs in the loft just up above. Now, also, if you look around in here in the cabin, you're going to see a spinning wheel. And then there's some wool carters. You're gonna see some things hanging from the ceiling as well. We have herbs hanging from the ceiling. So all of these types of things were part of living in this environment. You would have your spinning wheel in here so that you can spin your wool or your um, flax or cotton. Anything that you can use then to make clothing would have been spun here at a spinning wheel. And it was the ladies that would normally do that. And the girls, of course, the younger girls would help. And for cooking, they would have used the herbs that they were growing in their herb gardens. And there's another thing that we have hanging from our ceiling that people are usually really interested in and it's this right here these are known as leather bridges but if you look close enough at them you'll see that they are actually green beans that have been strung and then when you put them into a hot boiling water or in a stew they would rehydrate so you get your vegetables that way so that's just another thing that they would have done here inside of our cabin back to you Erin thank you Ranger Paula we're gonna go back to our slideshow, you guys. Let's see here. I heard that rooster back there. Did you all hear that rooster? So they would have lived um, 
it, it was it was a difficult life. They had to they were subsistence farmers, which meant that they had to grow or raise all of the food and everything that they needed to survive. There were a couple of little shops, but they were more like specialty shops. If you needed something metal, you could get some metal done at the blacksmith shop um, for some, you know, if you needed parts for like your wagon or your your um, plow, those kinds of things. But like the food and things, they really had to rely on their on themselves and their own land. So the children would have been doing chores um, and the children, Abraham and his sister both, um, did you know they studied they read um abraham lincoln said he went to about one year of school so he had one year of formal school the rest of his education was done at home um so his mom both of his parents really um encouraged the learning um they encouraged his love of reading and his curiosity um but really his mom was really a driving force behind that she really supported his love of learning and um really made sure he had books to read and things like that um so uh on your worksheet if you have it on your worksheet there is um a poem let me read it to you it says abraham lincoln is my name and with my pen i wrote the same I wrote in both haste and speed and left it here for fools to read. In 1826, he wrote that um, down in one of his books. So he was constantly doing schoolwork. He would do work at, at home with his write, reading and writing. Um, he did have a little bit of math. Um, but yeah, that's one of his examples of reading. Later in his life, he's actually a decent writer and he ha has a lot of poetry that's out there too. So we thought it might be fun for you to put your own name into the poem. So you can put your name in that first that first blank and then the year 2023 in the second blank. So you have a poem that's like Abraham Lincoln's. And he really liked to read. Um, he read a lot of different things. He read like every book he could get his hands on. Um, he really liked Aesop's fables. And he also liked to read about American history. So he read about George Washington. He read about Ben Franklin. Um, so he had a wide interest in things. He he was very interested in science. Um, and so we thought it might be fun for you guys to write in there, what was the last book that you've read? What was the last book that you've read? You can put it in the chat as well. What's the last book that you've read? I love reading. I read in my in my free time. The last book, I'm in the middle of something called The Winners right now. What are you guys reading? So kindergartners here are reading Walter the Baker. Very good. Char third grade's reading Charlotte's Web. Spy School British Invasion. Code Talkers. Hello Universe, Atomic Habits. Beauty and the Beast. Excellent job, you guys. I can tell you guys are a bunch of readers. Very nice. So. Um, like we were talking about, Nancy Hanks Lincoln was really supportive of Abraham's education. She did pass away two years after they moved to Indiana. So Abraham was only nine years old when his mother died. Um, Sarah was 11. Uh, she died of milk sickness. And, and what that is, um, the livestock that they were raising kind of wandered in the forest. They wandered in the woods. They did have fences, but the fences were more to keep wild animals out rather than to keep your animals in. So the animals wandered a bit. And so when they would scavenge and eat food, um, once all the really good food was gone, they were kind of having to eat what was left over. And sometimes the cows would get into a plant called white snake root. And white snake root has a toxin in it. So when the cow eats that plant, the toxin goes in their milk and it's in their meat. So if you drank the milk from that cow or if you um, ate the meat, you were essentially being poisoned by that toxin and people could die from it. So Abraham mother, Abraham's mother, Nancy Hanks Lincoln, she did die um, from milk sickness and she is buried here at our park. So here is her um, headstone. Um, Abraham worked with his dad to build his mom's coffin. 
um, and she was buried here uh, on a grassy knoll here in our park. Let's do a little bit of math. She was born, Nancy was born on February 5th, 1784, and she died on October 5th, 1818. So how old was Nancy when she died? How old was she? 34 is correct. 34 is correct. I know on her headstone, it says in her 35th year, that's she was really 34 and she had started her 35th year. So she was 34 when she died. And it is sad. He was, you know, they were little kids, right? So it is very sad. So when his mother passed away, not only was it sad, but his father still had a farm with livestock and the children to take care of. So the kids had to like step up their chores. They were expected to do even more um, to help take care of the family. So here you can see in these images, um, Thomas and his father are um, splitting wood there. Um, I think that they are making shingles in that image. Um, and then you see um, Sarah cooking. And in this image, she's cooking um, with her stepmom because about a year after Nancy Hanks Lincoln died, Thomas Lincoln went back to Kentucky um, because he knew a widow that lived there and he had proposed to her um, to come and be his wife. So that's that's Sarah Bush Johnson. They called her Sally, um, but that's Sarah and Sally in the kitchen cooking. Um, Sarah also brought her own three children. So that's what Ranger Paula was talking about when she was talking about how many eight people living in the cabin. Um, so uh, we thought we could talk about chores. Um, so there's some different chores that, that uh, pioneer kids would have done, right? They had to go and carry um, a yoke with, with buckets to go and collect water. We don't really do that anymore, right? We just turn on a faucet and our water comes out. So they would have to carry water. Um, they would have to maybe collect eggs. And sometimes, you know, we have people that do that now, obviously. We have people that keep chickens and they go out and collect the, the eggs. So on your sheet, if you have that, there's a Venn diagram. And you guys can work on this later, but on the left-hand circle, we thought you could put pioneers. And on the right-hand circle, you could put today. So you could put chores that the pioneers did, like, like going to collect water on the left, and then chores that you do today. And then if there's any that are the same, you can put them right in the center circle there. So that shows that you and the pioneer children do those, those same things, like feeding animals. If Gary, you if you want to stop yeah. sharing, you can see the chickens. Okay, yeah, let's see the chickens. Let's do that. Here we go. Um, right now, Kendra is uh, feeding the chickens up at our Living Historical Farm. So we actually have animals that are typical from that time period as well. So we've got the chickens, we have sheep, cows, and horses, and we take care of them and have them up here at the farm so that when people come and visit, they can see the animals, such as the ones that would have been around during Lincoln's time. Kendra, did you get any eggs? Yes, I did. I found some eggs in the coop. Let me show you guys real quick. So that's one so these thing. These are fresh eggs that they laid this morning and last oh. night. And we're going to go on out because I want to show you our sheep real quick. And we'll also get to see uh, Ranger Kendra here. She's going to be carrying a yoke with some water buckets. So she's going to be showing you that here as well here in just a few moments. Yeah. Let's see where our sheep are. This is our barn, by the way. And they were here just a few minutes ago, but our sheep are extremely shy. So actually, I see them on the other side of the barn because I think we know they know that we want to see them and they're not going to cooperate. But Kendra's going to go ahead and show you how they would have carried water. So Aaron talked a little bit about how they would have carried buckets from the well or the spring. And they actually had a spring about a hundred yards from their cabin. So the uh, young boys and young girls would have carried buckets of water. And then they would have used that water for various things. Uh, so cooking and cleaning, and maybe even just watering uh, the plants out in the, in the kitchen garden. All right, Aaron, it's back to you. 
It was an excellent demonstration. Thank you, Ranger Kendra. Okay, so let's go. Oops, I'm on the wrong screen here. Let's share screen again. So that was one of the reasons that he really only got about a year of formal education. The kids were, were busy working a lot of the times too. So that's just a really good example of what they would have been doing um, to help the family survive. So there's your Venn diagram um, and you can do your chores in there uh, after the presentation. As Abraham Lincoln got older, he really wanted to start making his, some of his some money, right? So he would start to go get jobs that would have, you know, would be paying jobs. So here in this image, you see Abraham little rowboat, and he's paddling some passengers out into the middle of the river so that they can catch that steamboat. Um, so they would pay him to be a ferryman and to move them out into the river. Um, this was actually his first law case too. We know that later in his life, Abraham Lincoln becomes a lawyer. And so here um, he was actually sued by the professional ferryman for taking passengers across the river. And they thought that he was taking business away from them. So he, they sued him to try to get him to have to stop moving passengers, but his defense of himself was that he wasn't taking people across the river. He was only taking people to the middle of the river. And he actually won that court case. That was his very first court case. And that was here in Indiana. We know that he also worked with his friend, Alan Gentry. Um, Gentry's father owned a shop and wanted to move some product down to New Orleans. So he and Alan Gentry um, piloted this boat, this flat boat from um, this area down to New Orleans. So on the Mississippi River, they moved these products. He got paid $8 a month and the trip took three months. So in three months, how much money did he make? How much money did he make in the three months of work? Yes, he made $24. So consider that you guys, $24 in three months. Um, so on your sheet, we, you have a space that you can write what was one of the jobs that Abraham Lincoln did to earn money. So he could, you could put a ferryman, you could put the flat boat trip. Um, and then underneath that, you can put a job that you have had where you got paid. What have you done to get money? So maybe that could be your chores or babysitting, or maybe, um, umpiring a baseball game or something. So put your, what you made money at under there. And then here is our Memorial Visitor Center. So after Abraham Lincoln's death, his assassination, um, people wanted to have a place where they could um, come pay their respects to him and to commemorate his life. Um, so they decided that they wanted to build this visitor center here um, in Indiana. And uh, the outside of the building is adorned with these sculptured panels that you can see in the background there. And there are five panels and each panel represents a different time period in Abraham Lincoln's life. So there you can see the Kentucky panel all the way on the left. And he's a young boy in Kentucky there. And then you can see more in the center of the photo, the Indiana panel. There are three more and they, they are his time in Illinois his time in Washington, DC. And then the fifth and final panel is, um, it represents a time after Abraham Lincoln's death. Um, so these this building was finished in 1943. Um, and it really started as a grassroots effort by the people in Indiana. They really wanted um, a place to commemorate Lincoln's time here in Indiana. Um, and it is made out of materials that could be locally sourced. So the, the materials were purchased and, and moved from uh, places within Indiana. Okay, I think we are to our last slide. I'm Paula, would you like me to stop sharing or do you want me to stay on the questions slide? Or do you want your you want to talk on camera? Okay, I'll stop sharing. There we go. And then and we got your there you go. We have the top of your head cut off. Oh. <laughs> okay, you guys, so we are, to the, we are to the point in our presentation where we welcome you to ask us questions that you have about the presentation, about the parks, 
um, anything like that. So you can type your question into the chat, or I think Casey said you could come off of mute and also ask the questions um, with your microphone. Love the presentation. Hey, it's it's Stephanie from Internet Two. I was just curious. Um, you know, we're all talking about primary sources and you know documents, different objects that you might have around um, Lincoln Boyhood Home. And so I was wondering if there were any fun or unusual um, primary sources that you have there. Do we take it, Erin? Yeah, go ahead, Ranger Paula. All right. Well, we have a few things in our museum. Uh, we have. Uh, a couple of uh, pieces of furniture that Thomas Lincoln made in our park museum. One of them is a, uh, uh, a desk and then there's a cabinet. And then there's also the, uh, the stones from the fireplace. So there are a few things that we still have that are from that time period uh, in existence at our parks curatorial. Uh, there's also uh, a letter that Abraham Lincoln wrote to a childhood friend of his, David Turnham. So there's just a couple of things we have that were actually Abraham Lincoln's or around when Abraham Lincoln was in Indiana. But like I like to tell kids all the time, he wasn't president when he lived here in Indiana. So nobody thought to keep anything of his. So we really don't have anything from that time period. Um, there are some other things that exist in some museums that came from that time. But as far as what we have at our park, uh, we're pre pretty limited. Thank you. Mm -hmm, you're welcome. Okay, there's more questions in here. I tried to type a couple answers here, but it said, Ranger Paulo, you'll you'll know this. How old was Abraham when he had the job, like taking the people, the ferryman, taking the people halfway in the river? How old was he when he was sued? He was 19. He was 19 years old when, uh, well, that was probably before he did the, fer the, the trip down to New Orleans. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess somewhere around 16, 17, 18 years old. I'm really not positive. Okay. But I, he was he was a, a later teen. Good question. I wish Very I Very good question. Okay, our next one is how and why did he fall into Knob Creek? Were there <laughs> journals or diary <laughs> entries? So how do we know about that fall into the creek? Yeah, that's the story that Abraham Lincoln would tell as well. Uh, Austin Gallagher was a friend of his and, and he saved his life. Can you imagine what it might have been like if uh, we hadn't had Abraham Lincoln? Uh, but yeah, um, I, we don't know what he was doing, if he was fishing or if he was uh, wading in the creek, but uh, obviously he got into some deep water and had to be rescued. And just so you know, a little water safety message, how the friend helped him is he took a branch and he reached it out to him so that Abraham could grab on. Because you do know that you never go in after somebody, right? If they're in the water, don't go in the water with them. You the reach out to okay. something with something to them or throw them something, okay? All right, so our next question, what happened to his sister, Sarah? So um, Sarah actually died in childbirth. So she was 21 when she had her first baby and it was a boy um, and they both passed away during her childbirth. So they are actually buried very close to here. Um, it's, it's now the state park. But when we remember when we were looking at that map of the area of, of Little Pigeon Creek and I said, there's the church and the cemetery, she's buried in that cemetery. So it's really just across the street from where I'm sitting right now in the state park. Okay, how long would it have taken for the Lincoln and his family for Lincoln and his family to travel to all locations? So how long did it take from uh, Kentucky to Indiana and then from Indiana to Illinois? Ranger Paula? Two weeks. They say it took two weeks from Kentucky to Indiana. They came here in 1816 and it was in December of that year. And Abraham Lincoln actually wrote that he got here to Indiana just after it became a state. So sometime around mid, uh, mid December is when they arrived. And we also know that they left here on March 1st of 1830 and they arrived in Illinois on the 15th. So about two weeks. Ranger Paula, tell them why they wanted to move in December. Cause I think that's so interesting. It was cold out. It was cold. Yeah. And, and why, why travel in, in the winter time when you're, you know, the, the ground's all frozen and it's so cold out. Well, the frozen ground would have been one of the reasons why it would have been a good idea to travel. It would have been easier 
uh, if the spring rains would have come. Uh, and if you are in any area that's been getting a lot of uh, water recently, you know how mushy it gets. So any roads that they were on would have been really hard to, to travel and navigate. Um, also, when they were, they were farmers, they were subsistence farmers. So they planted their crops in the spring. They grew in the summer, they harvested them in the fall of the year. So they needed to wait until after their harvest before they could start their travel. And then they could be at their new site in time to plant for the spring again. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys, I'm not reading any more questions in chat. Are we all questioned out? You can get now. <laughs> That's our rooster, you're right. That's our rooster. How many houses do they believe he lived in in Indiana? Um, well, when they first got here, they had an open faced um, enclosed an open faced house. It wasn't a, a full cabin. It was three sided, and the family could get in there and get out of the elements, you know, out of the out of the cold and the rain. Um, and then they built their first cabin that they actually stayed in, and then they were building that cabin where where our cabin site memorial is they were building that cabin before they moved to illinois so that would have been their third here i think we got them all you guys okay yeah. sounds great well it was wonderful meeting with everyone yeah this has been a really really great presentation and thank you so much to ranger aaron and ranger paula for your time and for your expertise for taking us around the park. And thank you to everyone for participating and joining the webinar. And I hope to see everyone at the next two sessions. They're gonna be our last two of the year. So I expect everyone to be there. Thanks everybody. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much everyone. Have a great day.